Orlando Furioso by Ludovico Ariosto. Translated by Barbara Reynolds. Canto 1. Of ladies, cavaliers, of love and war. Of courtesies and of brave deeds I sing. In times of high endeavor when the more had crossed the sea from Africa to bring great harm to France, when Agramanti swore in wrath, being now the youthful Moorish king, to avenge Troiano, who was lately slain, upon the Roman Emperor Charlemagne. And of Orlando I will also tell things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme, of the mad frenzy that for love befell, one who so wise was held in former time, if she who my poor talent by her spell, has so reduced that I resemble him, will grant me now sufficient for my task. The wit to reach the end is all I ask. Most generous and Herculean son. The ornament and splendor of our age. Ippolito, pray take as for your own. Your humble servant's gift, that men may gauge. The debt I owe to you, which words alone. Cannot repay, nor ink upon the page. And let it not be said my gift is small. For giving this, my lord, I give my all. Among the heroes most deserving praise. Whose catalogue of names I now prepare. Ruggiero I will bring before your gaze. The founder of the lineage you bear. His valiant deeds which time cannot erase. I will make known to you if you lend ear. And from your lofty thoughts your mind incline. To grant admittance to this tale of mine. Orlando who for long had loved in vain. Seeking the fair Angelica to please. India, Media and the Tartar Plain. And all the booty of his victories. Had left, to bring her to the west again. Where, at the foothills of the Pyrenees. He found the host of France and Germany. Encamped with Charlemagne in company. To make two monarchs bitterly repent. The folly of their arrogant advance. The African who from his continent had mustered every sword and every lance. And King Marsilio, on havoc bent, who rallied Spain to devastate fair France. Orlando at this point rejoined the fray, but scarce had done so than he rued the day. For then it was his dearest love he lost. See now how often human judgment errs. She whom he championed from coast to coast, in endless combat, meeting no reverse, is taken from him now amid a host of friends, on his own ground, and, what is worse, without a sword being drawn. King Charles the Wise. To quench a flame this remedy applies. Some days before, a rivalry arose. Between Rinaldo and his cousin, Count. Orlando, who both languish in the throes. Of love upon Angelica's account. Than hers no greater beauty either knows. Charles, to forestall their enmity, the Fount. Of the dispute, the fair Angelica. Consigned to Namo of Bavaria. Pledging that he would grant her in reward. To which of them in the impending fight. More infidels impaled upon his sword. Excelling thus in prowess and in might. Events, alas. With prayers did not accord. For scattered was the Christian host in flight. The duke, with others, prisoner was taken. And his pavilion in the rout forsaken. Angelica did not prolong her stay. She, who was promised as a victor's bride, into the saddle leapt and straight away. Choosing her moment well, set out to ride. She had foreseen the fortune of the day. Would bring disaster to the Christian side. Along a forest glade she took her course. And met a cavalier without a horse. His helmet on his head, in full cuirass. Girt with his sword and on his armor shield. As swift as if bare-limbed she saw him pass. Like one who for the red cloak led the field. No shepherdess who spied amid the grass. A cruel serpent did to terror yield. More than Angelica, who quickly turned. As soon as she the knight on foot discerned. He was a valiant paladin of France. The son of Amon, lord of Montauban. Whose horse, Bayardo, by a strange mischance. Had slipped from his restraining hand and gone. This knight who now approached at the first glance. Had recognized, though from afar, the one. Who with angelic beauty unsurpassed. In amorous enchantment held him fast. 
the lovely damsel turns her palfrey round. And through the wood full pelt she gallops off. Whether in clearings or where briars abound. Not caring if the going smooth or rough. She lets her plunging palfrey choose the ground. She, pale and trembling, scarce has wits enough. Deep in a savage wood, as in a dream. She roams, and comes at last upon a stream. Seated upon the bank was Pharaoh. Covered with dust and sweating freely still. From battle he but recently withdrew. To rest and quench his thirst had been his will. This cost him, though, more trouble than he knew. For, stooping hastily to drink his fill, he let his helmet tumble in the stream. Try as he might, it still eluded him. The maiden then arrived upon the scene. Her shrieks of terror ringing loud and clear. And at her voice up leapt the Saracen. Gazing upon her face as she drew near. Beyond all doubt he recognized her then. Though she was pallid and distraught with fear. Of her vicissitudes he had no inkling. And there she is before him in a twinkling. He was a gallant cavalier, in whom. Love burned no less than in the cousin's breast. And proved, despite his lack of helm and plume. A brave defender, equal to the test. Drawing his sword, he ran with shouts of doom. Where Montauban, unknowing, onward pressed. The knights to one another were not strangers. They'd vied in many trials of strength and dangers. Cruel are then the deadly blows that hail. Soon as the knights close in with weapons bare. Piercing the armor and the coats of mail. And sturdy bucklers which no better fare. Leaving the combatants in dire travail. To urge her palfrey onwards her sole care. The damsel claps her heels against his sides. And over hill and dale away she rides. The warriors with long endurance seek. To overcome each other, but in vain. Each through the other's guard attempts to break. But neither can for long advantage gain. Young Montalbano is the first to speak. Asking a parley of the knight of Spain. Like one whose heart, on fire with love, will burst. Unless emotion find an outlet first. You strive to do me harm, but I will prove. That on yourself you also vent your ire. For if it happens that two rays, as of. The rising sun, have set your heart on fire. To hinder me will not advance your love. If I am vanquished or I here expire. This will not make the lovely damsel yours. While we delay she takes another course. If you still love her, would it not be wise. To intercept her path without delay. And, coming thus upon her by surprise. Detain her ere she gallops far away. Let her then be awarded as a prize. To which of us by sword shall win the day. Else no result, as far as I can see. Will come of our long strife but injury. The pagan found this offer not displeasing. And so it was the contest was deferred. The enmity between the rivals ceasing. By hate and wrath they were no longer stirred. The pagan, from a tree his horse releasing. The son of Amon, who at first demurred. Prevailed upon to mount behind him pillion. To search for her who fled the duke's pavilion. O noble chivalry of knights of yore. Here were two rivals, of opposed belief. Who from the blows exchanged were bruised and sore. Aching from head to foot without relief. Yet to each other no resentment bore. Through the dark wood and winding paths, as if. Two friends, they go. Against the charger's sides. For spurs are thrust until the road divides. They gaze all round but cannot tell which way. Angelica has taken, for the mark. Of hoofs in both directions made that day. Seeming identical, they are in the dark. The cavaliers but a brief time delay. Along two paths, as fortune prompts, they hark. One here, one there. The pagan roundabout. Meanders and returns where he set out. He came once more upon that very bank. Where he had dropped his helmet from his head. Hope of Angelica, if he were frank. Was now remote, so he resolved instead. To try to raise the helm from where it sank. And, stepping to the edge, began to wade. Little he knows the work he'll have on hand. So deep the helm is buried in the sand. First from a tree a branch he pulled and stripped. Shaping and smoothing it to form a pole. 
which delicately in the stream he dipped, poking with care in every nook and hole. Although with patience he was ill-equipped, boredom at last began to try his soul. When, rising from the stream, a gruesome sight, he saw the head and shoulders of a knight. In battle armor he was fully clad, save that his head was bare, from his right fist. A helmet swung, the same the pagan had. In all this time been probing for and missed. To Pharaoh he spoke, irate and sad. Disloyal knight. How long will you persist? You leave this helmet here so grudgingly. Which once you promised to restore to me? Think back to the occasion when you slew. The brother of Angelica, for I. Am he, my arms, you will recall, you threw. Into the stream, ere many days went by. You promised you would throw my helmet too. If fortune intervenes to ratify. Your vow, why do you grieve? But if you must. Grieve only that you failed to keep your trust. If a fine helmet you aspire to get. With knightly honor let the deed be done. Orlando wears a splendid helm, or yet. Ronaldo a perhaps still finer one. The former from Almonte when he met. His death, the latter from Mambrino, one. Leave me this helmet, pledged to me by you. And make your promise in effect come true. So startled is the Saracen of Spain. His hair stands up erect and from his face. All vestiges of color seem to drain. He tries to speak but can emit no trace. Of sound. That Agalia, whom he'd slain. Not long ago and in this very place. Should thus rebuke him for his breach of faith. Sets him ablaze inside and out with wrath. He had no time to think of an excuse. The truth of what was said must be allowed. He stood and not a word could he produce. Pierced to the heart with shame, his head he bowed. He then and there determined he would use. And by his mother solemnly he vowed. No helmet but the one in Aspermont. Orlando pulled from off the proud Almonte. This vow, to tell the truth, he duly kept. That this was best, experience now taught him. Morose and sullen, on his horse he leapt. To chase the paladin until he caught him. For many days he scarcely ate or slept. Now here, now there, now everywhere he sought him. As for Rinaldo, that's another tale. For he set off upon a different trail. Rinaldo had not travelled far, when lo. He saw his charger galloping ahead. Bayardo. My Bayardo. Ho, there, woe. Without you weary is the road I tread. The horse, a deaf ear turning, did not slow. Its pace, but galloped further off instead. Rinaldo, fuming, followed from afar. But let us follow fair Angelica. Through dark and terrifying woods she flees. In lonely, wild, and cultivated places. The rustle of the undergrowth, the trees. Beech, rowan, elm, her terror interlaces. Weaving an evil dream in which she sees. Of all she most abhors the dreaded traces. Over hill and dale, each shadow a reminder. She seems to feel Ronaldo close behind her. Just like a fallow fawn or newborn roe. Which from its safe and leafy shelter spies. Its dam seized by a leopard and brought low. With bleeding throat and breast and flank she lies. And never more the light of day will know. From wood to wood the orphaned creature flies. And of the cruel part it seems to feel. With every bramble scratch, the jaws of steel. All day and night and half another day. She wandered endlessly, she knew not where. At last within a grove she chose to stay. Made fresh and cool by the caressing air. Two crystal streams flow past, not far away. Keeping the grasses green and tender there. And, murmuring among the little stones. Give forth a dulcet harmony of tones. This seems to her to be a safe retreat. And distant from Rinaldo many miles. Tired by her ride and by the summer's heat. Her fear with need for rest she reconciles. Along a flowered path she moves her feet. Letting her palfrey freely range the wilds. To the luxuriant riverbank it passes. And in the water meadow crops the grasses. Not far away she sees a charming nook. Where flowering thorn with the vermilion red. 
of roses is made gay, glassed in the brook, with shady oak trees arching overhead. In its recess, as she draws near to look, she finds a sheltered space, untenanted. Branches and leaves together so entwine. No sunlight can within directly shine. To all who enter, sweet young grasses lend. To rest inviting, couches soft and deep. The lovely damsels tempted to extend. Her weary limbs thereon and falls asleep. Too soon, alas. Her slumbers at an end. A sound of footsteps makes her pulses leap. Softly she rises and, from shelter peering. She sees a cavalier in arms appearing. If he be foe or friend she cannot tell. Her heart by hope and fear at once is shaken. Waiting to see if all may yet be well. Her apprehensions once again awaken. The night, meanwhile, passing beyond her dell. Towards the riverbank his way has taken. Propped on his elbow, cheek on hand, he rests. So deep in thought, a statue he suggests. More than an hour, this night, whom I will dub. The cavalier of grief, like this remained. I swear, my lord, when he began to sob. The very stones to pity he constrained. And might have wooed a tigress from her cub. The tears along his cheeks so freely rained. He seemed more like a river, and the fellows. Chest, heaving and sighing, was like a bellows. Alas, he said, my heart both burns and freezes. Now that my love is rendered null and void. What shall I do? Each hour my grief increases. I know the fruit is gathered and enjoyed. While scarce a word or look my anguish eases. Others are more delightfully employed. If I am left with neither fruit nor flower. Why do I pine for her at this late hour? A virgin may be likened to a rose. Which on its slender stem, by thorns defended. Within a garden unmolested grows. To pluck it no despoiling hands extended. The morning dew, the breeze that gently blows. The rain, the earth, its loveliness have tended. No sweeter pledge young lovers yearn to wear. Upon their breast or to adorn their hair. But when from the maternal stalk men sever. The rose in bloom, far from its verdant tree. All nurture of the heaven and earth forever. Vanish and benizens no more can be. Even so the flower of maidenhood, whenever. Yielded, loses its cherished purity. With zeal a virgin should, more than her eyes. More than her life itself, defend this prize. On him by whom she's loved let her bestow. This priceless treasure, and all others shun. Ah! Thankless fortune, why this cruel blow? While other lovers triumph, I alone. All joys denied, must empty-handed go. How can love's labor from defeat be won? Yet rather would I end my life today. Than the devotion of my heart gainsay. To anyone who asks me who this man is. Who waters thus the river with his tears. I will reply that he no African is. But Sacripanti, who great sorrow bears. Circassia's monarch, how it all began is. Soon told, his loved Angelica for years. And she who is the cause of his sad plight. Has straightway recognized him at first sight. From the far east, his heart's desire to gain. He journeyed where the sun sinks down to rest. He heard in India with grief and pain. She'd gone with Count Orlando to the west. Then learnt in France how Emperor Charlemagne. To part her from the cousins thought it best. Pledging her as a prize to which of these. Most ably helped the golden fleur de lis. He saw the camp and heard the tidings there. Of the defeat which threw the Christians over. He sought the lovely damsel everywhere. But not a trace of her could he discover. This is the sad and sorrowful affair. Which pierced the anguished bosom of the lover. Making him moan, lament and utter cries. Which stopped the sun for pity in the skies. While Sacripanti lies there sorrowing. Making a fountain of his streaming eyes. Saying first one and then another thing. I see no reason to immortalize. Coincidence his fortune favoring. His lady overhears these words of his. Thus in an instant comes to pass what he. Could scarcely hope for in eternity. The lovely maid observes with close attention. The words, the weeping and the air of one. 
whose love for her she finds is no invention. Of his devotion she has long since known. And yet to help him she has no intention. Being cold and hard, more than a block of stone. She holds the world in such contempt and scorn. No man deserving her was ever born. And yet, here in the woodlands, unescorted. She is inclined to take him as her guide. The drowning man who waits to be exhorted. To cry for help must be a man of pride. Who knows, if to his aid she'd not resorted. When such a friend would rally to her side. For long experience by now had taught her. He was the truest of all those who sought her. Yet she has no intention to relieve him. Of the keen anguish which his life destroys. Or in her fond embraces to receive him. Still less to yield the sweetest of love's joys. But by a shrewd evasion to deceive him. She plots and schemes and all her wits employs. How, by her charm, her servant she can make him. And then, ungrateful, afterwards forsake him. So, from the dark recess which shelter gave. Angelica stepped forth upon the scene. As when, emerging from a wood or cave. Jen or Venus on the stage is seen. With you be peace, she greeted him, God save. My honour and preserve it ever green. And from your mind for ever cancelled be. The false opinion which you hold of me. No mother with such joy and stupor raised. Her eyes to see the face of her lost son. Whom, when his regiment without him blazed. Its homeward way, she mourned as dead and gone. As when King Sacrapant, who stood amazed. Such grace and noble bearing looked upon. And in the presence of that priceless treasure. His joy and stupefaction knew no measure. With sweet and amorous affection filled. His goddess he approached without delay. She, with her arms about him, cooed and billed. Something she never ventured in Cathay. And of returning home began to build. Fresh hopes, for, now she held him in her sway. Her prospects brightened and some promise showed. That she might gain once more her royal abode. She gives King Sacrapanti an account. Of what has happened since the day when she. For help and reinforcements bade him mount. An eastward ride to him who holds in fee. The Chinese Nabathese, of how the count. From death, dishonor and all jeopardy. Defended her, and how she was, in fact. As when she left her mother's womb, intact. It may be true, but no man in his senses. Would ever credit it, yet possible. It seems to him, for, lacking in defenses. To what is plain, but made invisible. The king is blind, or with his sight dispenses. Since what is not, love's power makes credible. Thus he believes her for, as all men do. He gives assent to what he hopes is true. If by ineptitude the cavalier. England has mishandled thus his lance. He is the loser by it, for I fear. That fate will not provide a second chance. These words of his the damsel does not hear. But I will lead my love another dance. For if this gift of fortune I neglect. I shall forever lose my self-respect. So I will pluck the early morning rose. Forthwith, lest I by dilly-dallying. The moment of its perfect freshness lose. Than this, no sweeter or more pleasing thing. In spite of her reluctance, woman knows. Though she shed tears at her deflowering. Thus no repulse or coyness will prevent. The prompt embodiment of my intent. Such were his thoughts, and now, as he prepares. For sweet assault and in his aim persists. A clamor sounding through the forest tears. His eardrums, he reluctantly desists. And dons his helmet, for he always wears. Full armor, as for battle or the lists. He finds his horse and bridles it at once. And, mounting to the saddle, takes his lance. Along the forest soon there rides a knight. Who has the semblance of a valiant man. The armor which he wears is snowy white. Likewise his plume. The Tartar sovereign. Being put out by the unwelcome sight. Of one whose coming has thus foiled his plan. Such interruption of his pleasure brooks. With anger undisguised and stormy looks. Awaiting his approach, the king defies. The cavalier, thinking to come off best. But, in comparison of strength and size. 
the oncomer, I think, would pass the test. Cutting the king's boast short, the knight applies. His spurs and quickly puts his lance in rest. The other, furious, retorts, then both. Full tilt are galloping in all their wrath. No lions run, no bulls advance with rage. In enmity so deadly or so fierce. As these two foemen in the war they wage. With equal skill each other's shield they pierce. The mountain trembles, as the knights engage. From its green base to the bare peak it rears. And well it is the hauberk stand the test. Else would each lance be driven through each breast. The chargers ran unswerving on their course. Like rams colliding head to head they were. The pagans failing to withstand the force. Of impact, fell at once and did not stir. Although so fine a steed. The other horse. Went down, but rose at once, touched by the spur. The horse of Sacrapanti lay prostrate. Its rider pinned beneath its lifeless weight. The unknown champion, who sat erect. Seeing the other underneath his steed. Judged he had done sufficient in respect. Of that encounter, and no further need. Was there to fight, a path which ran direct. Ahead he chose and galloped off at speed. Before one from his tangle could unwind him. The other put a mile or so behind him. As when a plowman, dazed with stupefaction. After a thunderbolt has struck, aghast. Slowly uprights himself where by its action. Beside his lifeless oxen he was cast. And views, dismayed, the shriveling contraction. A pine tree stripped and withered by the blast. So Sacrapanti rises to his feet. The damsel having witnessed his defeat. He sighs and groans, but not because a foot. Or arm is broken or is out of place. But shame alone so makes his color shoot. That never has he worn so red a face. Not only has he been defeated, but. Angelica, to add to his disgrace. Now lifts the heavy burden from his back. And, save for her, all power of speech he'd lack. Oh, pray, my lord, said she, be not dismayed. Your honor's not impugned because you fell. But rather should the blame be squarely laid. Upon this hack, which served you none too well. Its jousting days being over. I'd have said. Yon knight gained little glory and, to tell. The truth, he now the victory should yield. For he, not you, was first to leave the field. And while the damsel thus consoles the king. They see, with horn and wallet at his side. An envoy on a nag come galloping. Weary he seems, and breathless from his ride. He has, they find, no messages to bring. But asks the king if he by chance has spied. On horseback in the forest a brave knight. With armor, shield and helmet plume of white. The pagan answered, here, as you can see. He has unhorsed me, and not long ago. He left, and who it was thus dealt with me. In case we meet again, I fain would know. The envoy said, in my capacity. I will inform you without more ado. You have been felled from horseback by a foeman. Who is a valiant and courageous woman. She is as beautiful as she is brave. Nor will I hide her celebrated name. She at whose hands just now you suffered have. Such ignominy and undying shame. Is Bradamante. Then the envoy gave. His nag its head. The king, his cheeks aflame. Knows neither what to say nor what to do. In the dishonored state he's fallen to. For, having failed to fathom what had come. To pass, he recognizes finally. That by a woman he was overcome. The more he thinks, the worse it seems to be. He mounts the other horse, morose and dumb. No word escapes his lips, but silently. He takes the maid, departing at a trot. Deferring pleasure to some quieter spot. And scarce two miles they go before they hear. Through the encircling wood a deafening sound. A clamor and a crashing, far and near. Making the forest tremble all around. Soon afterwards they see a horse appear. Its costly harnessing with gold is bound. It leaps across the streams and over breaks. And anything that an obstruction makes. If tangled foliage and dusky air. The damsel said, do not deceive my eyes. Among those interlacing branches there. 
That horse which clears its passage hurdle-wise. Must be Bayardo. Yes, I know, I swear. It's he. How well he seems to recognize. That too upon one horse fare ill indeed. For here he comes to satisfy our need. The monarch of Circassia dismounts. And to the horse draws near, the rein intending. To lay hold on, at once Bayardo flaunts. His crupper and, as quick as light, upending. Answers with his heels. Were he now to trounce? The hapless king, no prospect of defending. Him there'd be, four Bayardos in such fettle. His hoofs could split a mountainside of metal. But tame and docile near Angelica. With human gentleness he takes his stand. No dog more welcoming or friskier. Greeted his master home with leaping and. Great joy. Bayardo still remembers her. For often she would feed him from her hand. When in Albraca for Count Amon's son. Great love she had, while he for her had none. Her fair left hand the bridal ornaments. And with her right she strokes his chest and neck. The horse, of marvellous intelligence. Submissive as an angel, to her beck. And call responds. The pagan, with good sense. Then mounts Bayardo, holding him in check. Her palfrey being thus lightened, from its croup. She moves and to the saddle now mounts up. She chances, casting round her glance, to see. A knight on foot, his weapons as he hies. Clashing against his armor. Angrily. Duke Amon's son her senses recognize. He loves her more than life itself, but she. Abhors him as a crane from falcons flies. Once she loved him and he abhorred her worse. Than death, and now their fates are in reverse. Two magic fountains are the cause of this. They rise in the Ardennes, not far away. One from the other. Who drinks from one is. Filled with amorous longing, those who essay. The second are to all love's joy and bliss. Rendered immune, and cold as ice are they. Rinaldo tasted one and love prostrates him. Angelica the other and she hates him. The water, with a secret poison mixed. So altered her who formerly adored him. On whom her glance with hatred now was fixed. Her tear-filled eyes becoming more and more dim. She urged the king, and in a voice betwixt. Forlorn and fearful, anguished she implored him. To wait no longer for the cavalier. Who fast approaches, but to flee with her. Have you so little trust, the king replied. And do I stand so low in your esteem? You look on me as useless by your side? Unable to defend you I now seem? Do you forget so soon how I defied? Opponents at Albraca? On this theme. What of the night when I, alone and nude? King Agrican and all the field withstood? She does not answer, nor know what to do. Rinaldo is approaching much too close. Already he makes threatening gestures to. The Tartar king who on Bayardo goes. As he can see. The angelic damsel who. Has set his heart ablaze he also knows. But what between these two proud knights occurred. In the ensuing canto will be heard.